We're going to start out saying the Pledge of Allegiance. So uh, remove your caps. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 and it landed in the Canagua outlet. Many died and many were injured. Today we are dedicating the history along with a marker to signify the tragic incident. Thank you to the William G. Pomeroy Foundation for the grant. Also many thanks to Tim Munn who did the research for the application and followed through making this happen. And I am going to announce uh, the guest speaker, uh, David Turian. He's uh, here to talk about tell the story and it's going to be quite interesting and this microphone doesn't work very good but hey David I'm going to try to, I'm going to, try to adjust this mic if I can okay thank you I'll try to talk loud Good morning, everyone. My name is David Turan. I'm from Syracuse, New York. I'm here today with my wife, Chris, and we have a family connection to this railroad accident that occurred 113 years ago today. I want to thank Mayor Mike Potasio and Tim Munn for both thinking of my family and inviting me here to share our brief story here today. It was a family story like any other family story, my sister and I paying limited attention in our early years. Something about a train, an accident, and a big scar on my grandmother's leg. As the years passed and I became more interested in our family history, I began to ask questions, found some answers, and was amazed at what I learned. This is our story. On Friday, August 25, 1911, my great-grandmother, Hazel Smith, and her three-year-old daughter, my grandmother, Frances, were traveling from Buffalo, New York, to Sayre, Pennsylvania, on the crowded Lehigh Valley Express. The Lehigh number four, as my grandmother referred to it. As we all know, that train did not successfully make it to its final destination, nor did everyone aboard live to see another day. My great-grandmother Hazel did not survive the crash that occurred right here on that day, and my grandmother Frances was seriously injured. In fact, according to my grandmother, she was the only passenger in her train car who survived, which, by the way, for those familiar with the wreck, was the car that was crushed flat in the creek bed. My great-grandmother Hazel initially survived, but succumbed three days later the following Monday at a hospital in Canandaigua, which may be why her name isn't listed on that paper you all have. Some notable facts that I learned from my grandmother and mother, many of which were also noted in old newspaper articles. Many passengers on board that day were Union Army Civil War veterans traveling home from the GAR encampment in Rochester, New York an organization for veterans of the Civil War. My great-grandfather, Harry Smith, Hazel's husband and Francis's father, was a Lehigh Railroad engineer himself, and in a horrible twist of fate, was scheduled to pass by the ill-fated train that day in the vicinity of Manchester. And the plan was for the family to wave to each other as they passed a somewhat common activity in those days. What actually occurred 
was that Harry stopped his freight train upon discovering the accident site, locating his essentially gravely injured wife and seriously injured toddler, toddler daughter who was walking around listlessly and crying. He then commandeered a nearby horse and buggy and transported them, along with some others, to the hospital in Canandaigua over nine miles away. I read a newspaper article, which I have with me here today, claiming that Harry actually witnessed the train go off the bridge as they were waving with his family aboard. My family told me he was never the same after that, but continued to work for the railroad until he retired. At the moment of the crash, my grandmother was seated in the aisle on a suitcase and found immediately after the crash, still in her mother's arms, who would initially not release her grip despite being gravely injured. The purpose of that original trip that August was for Hazel and Francis to travel from their home in Waverly, New York to Buffalo to visit and stay with family friends. The father of that family was a train man himself and was, unbelievably, working on board the ill-fated train that day. Luckily, the train men survived. It would seem railroad families really did stick together back then. In the end, as I have mentioned previously to Mayor Putasio and Tim Munn, my family may have lost a lot that day, but we are grateful that lessons were learned from its determined cause transverse fissure or bad rail as we all know it now, and future accidents likely avoided and lives saved as a result. And finally, many people may remember 1911 for the more popular, such as the births of Lucille Ball, Jean Harlow, Ronald Reagan, or Ginger Rogers, or perhaps even the death of Joseph Pulitzer. But for the surviving family of my great-grandmother, Hazel Smith, and my grandmother, Frances Smith Bailey, who were passengers on the ill-fated train, this event, 113 years ago today, and this place, memorialized with historical markers and other permanent fixtures, represent one of the most significant historical family events we know. The surviving family, John Smith Bailey of Orlando, Florida, my sister, Lisa Turan of New Bern, North Carolina, and of course, my wife, Chris, and myself, as well as other family members out there, would like to collectively express our sincere gratitude to the village of Manchester, Mayor Putasio, Tim Munn, who is instrumental in so many ways, the William G. Pomeroy Foundation, and certainly many others, for their contributions, effort, and support, so that this historical event and place, as well as the lessons learned, are not forgotten. Thank you. First of all, I want to just acknowledge, first of all, it's a beautiful day today. We've had a lot of rain recently, haven't we? So that's why we got a lot of green grass this summer. Anyways, I want to acknowledge that I'd like to see these people are in attendance today. I want to acknowledge these people because they are instrumental when we are able to get grants, uh, when we do uh, activities to uh, you know, memorialize something. And, um, as I look in the crowd and see around here today, I see Manchester Supervisor David Phillips. Thank you for coming out today. Scoutmaster Bill Lawrence. I see Senator Pam Helming, who's behind me. <laughs> well, it's not my better side, Pam. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I also like to uh, uh, mention that uh, Assemblyman Jeff Gallant here, and I know he's a big advocate for local historical markers and, and uh, education issues and preservation of certain uh, artifacts, buildings, and so forth. Also, Mayor Nancy Johnson's here. Uh, Manchester's had some wonderful mayors, contributing mayors in, uh, in the recent years. And then next comes to my, the next guy who, my cohort here, we usually get in trouble dreaming up these things. And then next thing, I got to say, he's the one that brings them to life. I have, I always have a couple friends who are artists. We draw illustrations and, hey, can we do this and that? And then one day I look and I said, how the heck did you get the caboose over there? Like that. And my, my next thing, to have an opportunity to write a grant, I'm not going to lie. And God rest his soul, my old English teacher up there, uh, Miss Shantz, Miss Helen Shantz, gave me the courage to do some writing in my life. So after 
I've been fortunate, you know, I was kind of an athlete to jock, and sometimes I'd rather go out and play the football game and maybe do my homework, but she made it, she made me realize it was important to go get an education, learn, to, you know, read and write a little bit like that, and she also believed in the essays that I wrote in my senior year. Um, so I have to thank her. And one of the things in doing the grant, grants are not easy to write. I thought I was going to just, oh, peel off some history, give some uh, bibliography, and boom, I'm in. And it wasn't the case. I was actually rejected twice on the Pomeroy uh, grant, and so I came up with an artifact. He said, we know about that, that's online. We know that. There are national congressional hearings about the railroad accident. Newman was the photographer back in the day. There's, there's antique shops that still have the photographs, maybe not many now. Uh, of the different railroad cars over the thing. And I had some original clothes that I picked up at a lawn sale or something like that, but it was interesting to me. Um, but the thing that clinched it one day, and I do a lot of surfing and not looking for various items connected to our area to bring back the history to our area, was this paper right here. And what this verifies it was a national story. And this is a paper, not from Rochester, though I guess say Doug's got a great paper, Doug Parmley back here, a great paper from Rochester, and so forth. But this is the front page of the San Diego, California newspaper in 1911, showing that and this was the clincher that gave us uh, the grant money to uh, do the marker. So that's basically my story, and, and it's and now hopefully we can have more markers you know pop up around here there's a lot of subjects and things that we need to do and i'd also encourage this because i've had in the past i've, I've had uh, dr preston pierce the county historian is a very close friend of mine and he's a big advocate of boy scouts and he, he's known a couple of eagle scout projects that have done historical markers and uh, you know get involved um we want our you know anywhere we want our kids here locally to know that they come from someplace and um you know, this history, account for this history is important. So I want to thank you for coming out for this lovely day and, uh, and enjoying the celebration. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mayor. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here this morning uh, in my hometown, which is great. Uh, I was born and raised over here on Shirley Street. Gaining dinosaur status so it was many years ago. But, uh, I can remember as a young, young kid, uh, my dad worked on the railroad. He started, he started right behind, right behind me, right behind me here in the yard. And uh, he worked on the railroad for 42 years. But across the street from me, um, the Parmley household was uh, was a mainstay of mine because I couldn't stay away from the model train display that uh, that Doug had in his basement. And I am still intrigued to this day by that. And what they're doing here is uh, is wonderful with, with the model railroad uh, gentlemen have put here and what they're doing. It, and I can't appreciate it more. Um, 16 years ago, 17 years ago, 15 years ago, I can't remember which, but when I ran for supervisor, one of my uh, agenda items was the roundhouse. And um, by God, something's going to happen to that before I die. If it, if it kills me. So... Uh, we're working hard on it. I just had a conversation with uh, thank you. I just had a conversation with Supervisor uh, Phillips about it. Uh, it's moving forward um, at a snail's pace, and, and my, one of my favorite sayings is, you know, with government, everything is clear as mud and still is glass. So that's what we're faced with. But we're getting there, and and, uh, and and there's light at the end of the tunnel, which is which is refreshing. Uh, what's happened here at the park? I want to talk briefly about that because uh, there's been a committee put together, and uh, Mike spearheaded this this project uh, many years ago, and um, there's many more things that uh, the committee is working on and that are gonna happen here. There's some exciting things that are gonna happen here, and the growth of this, this park is, uh, is certainly um, an inspiration to me, being part of that committee, and the committee members that I'm working with, and uh, there'll be an announcement on that and a, and a presentation given to the uh, village board uh, later this fall. So, uh, with all that being said, I have to touch on what, what uh, my, my classmate, Tim Munt. We moved from here to Victor in uh, 1970, and we had the same teacher, Ms. Schantz. Well, my homeroom was next to Ms. Schantz. I was scared to death of that woman. I was in the same homeroom four years in high school, 
in our senior year, we could, we could uh, choose what we wanted to do for uh, electives. Well, I procrastinated. And I got into the uh, guidance counselor's office late. And one of my electives was going to be speech class with Miss Schantz. And I was scared to death for two reasons. Number one, I wouldn't get up and talk in front of two people, let alone a classroom. And number two, she scared me to death. But anyways, I went through that class, and she changed she changed my life, like she did with me too. She was a wonderful teacher. And just a couple years ago, before, just, just after her passing, I said to my wife, I need to contact her and tell her how much she has done for me in my life. And come to find out that I don't not to be able to, to, to share that with her. So, uh, just another story about Miss Shots. Uh, so I just want to let you know how much I appreciate the opportunity to be with all of you here today at that case, this historical marker recognizing the 1911 Lehigh Valley train derailment here in Manchester. This marker is located uh, what is now the Manchester, here at the Manchester Railroad Park, which is just 500 feet from the site right down the tracks. Uh, where I spent many, many days uh, fishing in the Canandaigua Outlet. Uh, 113 years ago, at 12.58 p.m., August 25th, 1911, a Lehigh Valley passenger train derailed while passing over the Canandaigua Outlet. The accident was caused by a defective rail, which sent several cars into the water. The train was carrying most, uh, mostly Civil War veterans from Philadelphia who were returning from a Grand Army of the Republic reunion. 30 people, 29 people, I talked to, uh, to Tim about it, his, his, varied, uh, his varied numbers, um, were, were, uh, were killed and over 60 injured, marking this event of one of the worst disasters in the history of Ontario County. This dedication ceremony serves as a solemn reminder of the lives lost and the resilience of this community in the face of tragedy. It's up to future generations to learn from these mistakes that caused this accident and prevent another accident like this one from happening in the future. And we can thank the Sperry Rail Services Company. Anybody heard of the Sperry Rail Services Company? There's probably a few historians here that have. Uh, for preventing such tragedies from ever happening since this one. So in 1927, Elmer Sperry invented rail testing technology. He formed the Rail Sperry, uh, Sperry Rail Services Corporation and became the worldwide leader in rail testing. It still continues to this day. And, um, for a little bit of, of history, uh, Mr. Sperry was born and raised in Cincinnati, New York, which is now part of my district on the 131st. So it's my honor today to present Manchester, Village of Manchester, and, and being from the New York State Assembly, a proclamation in recognition of this historical uh, monument ceremony. So if I could get uh, the mayor and trustees to come up, please. So this assembly proclamation recognizing the dedication of the historical marker of the 1911 Lehigh Valley Railroad train derailment. It was 113 years ago, on August 25, 1911, at 12.58 p.m., that a tragic train derailment occurred on the Lehigh Valley Railroad in Manchester, marking one of the worst disasters in the history of Ontario County. And whereas the Lehigh Valley passenger train, carrying mostly Civil War veterans from, the, from Philadelphia, returning from a Grand Army of the Republic reunion, was in the process of passing a bridge over the Canandaigua outlet at the time of the accident. Whereas, caused by a defective rail, the derailment led to several cars tumbling from the tracks into the water below, creating a scene of chaos and devastation that resulted in 30 deaths and more than 60 injured. Whereas this historical marker, placed 500 feet from the site of the derailment, now the Manchester Railroad Park, serves as a space that honors the legacy of those whose lives were affected by this historic event. And whereas this dedication ceremony serves as a solemn reminder of the lives lost and the resilience of the community in the face of tragedy, while also educated future generations about the historical significance of this event. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Assemblyman Jeff Gallahan, along with the citizens of the mighty 131st District, hereby recognize the dedication of this historical marker in remembrance of the victims of the 1911 
trail, derailment, and honor the memory of those perished. Dated August 25th, 2024. What a beautiful day it is to be here to commemorate the dedication of this very important historical marker. I want to thank all of you for being here. Um, you've heard a lot about the history, so I won't run through that again. But I do think it's important to recognize everyone who has been involved in making this possible, beginning with the William Pomeroy Foundation. Um, I'd like to thank them for recognizing the significance of this historical event and making it possible to bring this marker here to our community. I also want to go back to January of 2017. That's when I took office as New York State Senator. And it wasn't long after that when Mayor Nancy Johnson reached out to me and wanted to talk to me about the village and the significance of the railroad, of the tragedy, and also of the library. Uh, he's a big advocate of the library. And she was relentless, really, in her push for, we need to get this done. And when Mayor Potasio took over, again, his perse perseverance and that of the village board has just been absolutely incredible in making sure that this, this actually got done. And also in pursuing additional grant funding, which has taken a long time, but that grant funding is, is continuing to move forward and hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll have some exciting news about additional funds to restore this area. But I also want to recognize Tim Munn for all of the great work that you've done and really and truly all of the volunteers in the entire community. I know for me, when I look at this marker, not only will I remember the tragedy that occurred, but I'll remember what's behind it and it's all of you and the role you've played in marking this significant event. I also want to say thank you to Dave for sharing your family's story. Um, it was great to listen to you it, because it really brought a human perspective, a really personal perspective to what happened on that day. Um, remembering all those who perished, the Civil War veterans, but the everyday citizens as well, like Dave's great-grandmother, Hazel, and his grandmother, Frances. And one of the things that struck with me, and maybe it's because I'm a mom and a grandmother, was how your great-grandmother clung to your grandmother and saved her life. And she was able to share this story with us. So again, I want to say thank you to everyone who made this possible. Uh, thank you, too, to my colleague and the state legislature, Assemblyman Jeff Gallahan, for his dedication and commitment to this community in preserving and protecting the history. You know, that's something that's really important to me as well. We watch across this nation right now and every day that we see, you know, historical markers are going away. It speaks volumes about this community, how you're erecting a historical marker because you understand the importance of preserving our history, the importance, as Tim said, of letting our next generation know what their history is, what they should be proud of, and what we stand for. Um, I have a New York State Senate citation that I'd like to ask the mayor and the village board to please come forward and I'll present to you. On behalf of the New York State Senate, it is truly an honor and a privilege to present this Senate citation to the village of Manchester in honor of the 1911 train derailment marker dedication. Thank you to everyone who's been involved. Thank you. I see that we have the uh, town supervisor here, and uh, I wasn't quite sure if he's going to make it. And uh, would you like to say a few words, Dave? <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. We're a small community. Yeah, Dave, I gotta say one thing. Dave's been very supportive of the railroad in the in the park, uh, and I appreciate him as a town supervisor. Thank you, Dave. This is 
one of those impromptu uh, speeches, right? Um, you know, I think when you talk to people from the community, uh, everybody here has some connection to the, uh, somebody has connection to the railroad. Somebody's grandparent, somebody's father, you know, so many uh, families are touched by the railroad and uh, the history of the railroad. In particular, um, you know, this wreck. My wife's grandfather was uh, one of the wreckers that uh, did the, uh, you know, the, the salvage work from that afterwards. Um, and I think it is really speaks volumes to Mike um, and his organizations that he's worked with. Uh, how dedicated they are. Uh, Victor Railroad, uh, Railroad Society is another group. Folks are, are so dedicated to this, to the railroad, to the legacy of railroad in the town of Manchester. And for, for me, I'm just proud to be able to be any part of it and support it in any way I can at the time. So thanks for listening to me and uh, again, congratulations. Edgar Pangburn, Estala Pauno, Helen Pauno, Henry Pauno, W.P. Rundle, Isaac Snyder, Uncle, Mary Esther, Uncle, Rebecca Vanderlip, Frederica Winkler, Barbara Zudik, Hazel Smith, and One Unknown. Thank you. Hey. Thank you very much. One more, one more thing I'd like to say. Uh, I want to thank uh, the Boy Scouts for coming today and uh, for cooking hot dogs for the group here today. MMRA, it stands for Manchester Model Railroad Association. They're here in full force, and they will be opening up the boxcar. See trains running today. I'd like to thank the Village of Manchester Board, and also all the guest speakers. Thank you very much. There is uh, hot dogs over there being cooked. 